I want to talk a little bit more about the dialectic of salvation that I talked about in a previous video. So there are these two viewpoints, both of them true, which on the surface can seem contradictory. One, salvation by works. We merit salvation by our works, done in grace. And viewpoint number two, salvation is a free gift received through faith alone, completely apart from our works that we can never merit or earn in any way. Um, both of these are true in a sense. Why is this true? And I want to start first with salvation by works. We have to merit it. What does merit mean in this context? Merit means in this context that God has promised a reward that if I do X, Y, and Z, he will give me the reward of salvation. What is it that God tells me I have to do? What is X, Y, and Z? Well, I have to persevere in repentant faith, which means as life's trials, as demonic attacks, as temptations um, come along, I will have to persevere in denying myself, denying those uh, temporary pleasures of the flesh, denying pride, greed, boastfulness, lust, licentiousness, all those kind of things. Um, that's what I will have to do in order to be saved. And God says, if you do that, I'll give you the reward of salvation, you know, at the end of your life. That's absolutely true. So the only way any of us can be saved is we have to do those good things. Is it good to repent of sin? Yes, that's good. Is it good to place your trust in God? Yes, that's good. Is it good to do good works, to resist demons? Yes, that's good. Is it good to love other people? Yes, those are good things. These are the good things that we have to persevere in, what you might call faith, in order to receive the uh, the wage, in a sense, of salvation. Uh, and the scripture talks about salvation in those terms often. Jesus tells, tells a parable about a, a man who owns a vineyard who hires laborers to earn a wage at the end of the day. And in that parable, the wage you earn is salvation itself. Um, the scripture often talks about, you know, you reap what you sow. Uh, Jesus, you know, parables about judgment day, um, the sh separating the sheep and the goats. And some are welcomed into heaven saying, why am I welcomed in? Well, you're welcomed in because when I was naked, you clothed me. I was hungry, you fed me. These are the reasons why, you know. There's a lot in the Bible that talks about judgment by works, salvation by works. Um, now, if you're one of my Protestant listeners, you're going to have all the reasons why what I just said isn't true. But the fact of the matter is, the Bible does speak about it that way. Um, so there is a sense in which you can speak about it that way. And you just can't deny the fact that in order to be saved, you have to repent and persevere in repentance until your death. And that is, a, in a sense, that is a work that you have to do. It's a good thing that you have to do. And you can only be saved on that basis, through that means. So that's true. That's one part of it. The other part of it, is that salvation is a free gift of grace given to us by the Father's mercy because Jesus died for us and atoned for our sins, and there's nothing we could ever do to merit or earn the grace of God. I couldn't do, I couldn't fast for 40 days, you know, and give all my money to the poor and, and love on everybody with all my heart uh, and somehow enter into communion with God through my own efforts. That would be strictly impossible metaphysically impossible. There's no amount of good works I could ever do to bring myself into relationship with God. It's something he can do, only he can do, and only by his grace can it happen. And he does it. He doesn't He doesn't do it on the basis of, hey, first I need you to do X, Y, and Z, and then I'll forgive you. He All, all he asks is repent, place your trust in me, you know, get baptized, go to confession, boom, completely eternally forgiven of all the sins I've ever committed, brought into relationship with him. And I stay in relationship with him as long as I keep that faith, as long as I keep that repentance, as long as I keep that contrition, as long as I have that kind of faith, that, that faith which uh, God forgave me through, you know, I repent and I believe that faith, as long as I have that faith, I remain saved. I retain that gift forever, as long as I re retain that faith. And that faith alone, as we just said, is the only th possible way that I could ever receive that gift. And that faith alone will always suffice 
for me to keep that gift. It's not like I have contrition, God forgives me. And then at some point in the future, God will say, you know what? Your works just aren't good enough, even though I'm still contrite, even though I still have that repentant faith. It would never happen. So there's a sense in which I'm saved by faith alone, completely apart from works, and that my works are absolutely and utterly irrelevant. Um, you know, as long as I'm contrite, uh, as long as I have that kind of faith, my works are 100% irrelevant. Uh, God is giving me that gift, despite whatever my works might be or not be, as long as I am contrite, as long as I have repentant faith. And that faith alone suffices for salvation from the beginning to the end of the Christian life. Uh, so both of these things are true. And there's a dialectic between these two um, ways of speaking and ways of thinking about salvation. And depending on where you're at in the Christian life, one might be some, you might need to hear one more than the other, uh, depending on where you're at in the Christian life. But there's always, there are always both of them right there talking back and forth. Um, both of them are true in their own way. Thank you guys for listening. I want to do more on this subject in the future. God bless you guys. All right.